Are you ready to start using the commission module? Well, great news. I'm going to walk you through the quick and easy steps to get started. This video will include how to set up the commission and CDA settings for each location in your account, set your preferred company settings, user settings, and set up your company's custom fees and deductions. One of the awesome features of the commission module is that the system will automatically generate a commission disbursement authorization form, sometimes called a commission demand letter, when you manage commission on a transaction. Here is an example of what the commission disbursement looks like. This document basically instructs the title company, escrow, or closing attorney on how to disperse commission for a transaction. The CDA will be customized with your company logo in the header. It will provide an overview of the basic transaction information, including the sale price and gross commission. It will list the escrow, closing attorney, or title company contact information. And most importantly, it will include a payable section. Lastly, the CDA includes the signature of the broker or person authorized to sign the document. Go ahead and click your name in the upper right, then Admin Settings. From the left menu, click on Manage Locations. You'll need to complete the setup for each location in your account where you plan to manage commission. To do that, click the gear icon next to the location and select Commission and CDA Settings. From this page, you'll be able to customize how the form works. First, choose your preferred options for CDA payability settings. These settings will determine who commission is paid to. If you'd like to instruct escrow, title, or the attorney to pay all commission, including agent commissions, to the brokerage, then you'll want to select the first checkbox. That means your brokerage will be responsible for dispersing commissions to agents. If you prefer to allow the escrow or title company to pay agents directly, then leave the checkbox unchecked. You'll have the same option for referral commissions. Check the box if you'd like to pay referral commissions to your brokerage or leave unchecked if you'd like for escrow or title to make payables directly to the referrers. Next, upload the signature of your broker or person authorized to sign the CDA and complete the fields with the signer's name and any text such as title and company name that you'd like to appear under the signature. You'll also want to enter the contact or broker's address, phone number, fax, or email. This contact information will be displayed in the header of the CDA as shown in this example. For the franchise fee section, if your company collects a franchise fee off the top, you can customize that here. You have the option to base that on a percentage or flat dollar amount. Go ahead and select your preferred option, then enter the default percentage or dollar amount. You will be able to edit this at the transaction level as needed. Next, enter your custom franchise fee name. Note that the franchise fee will be deducted before the broker agent split. If your brokerage doesn't collect a franchise fee off the top, go ahead and leave this blank. Next, if you need to collect any other custom off the top deductions such as a B&O, royalty fee, or state tax, you can enable that option here. We'll talk more about how to create the custom deductions a little later. For earnest money deposit, if your brokerage holds earnest money that needs to be credited at closing, you'll want to check the box next to Allow Earnest Money Deposit Deduction. If you don't hold earnest money, then leave that unchecked. Last, for CDA instructions, you can create your own custom text that will appear on the CDA as shown here. For example, you can include wiring instructions or details on where the title company should mail the commission. Keep in mind that you can also add or edit the CDA instructions at the transaction level when managing commissions. And that's it. Go ahead and click Save Settings. You'll need to complete the commission and CDA settings for each location in your account. Now that we've completed the CDA settings, there are a few company settings that you'll want to complete next. From the left menu, click on Company Settings. Under Email Settings, 
Commission Module customers have the option to send each of their agents a monthly production summary. The summary will include the agent's production details, including the number of closings, sales volume, and commission earned for the last month, as well as year to date. If you'd like to turn on this report, go ahead and click the checkbox next to Email Monthly Production Summary to Agents. Next, scroll down to Financial Settings. If your agents are on a commission plan and you'd like to track year-to-date figures based on the agent's start date, click the checkbox next to Use Start Date of Agents to determine fiscal years for year-to-date calculations. If you prefer for year-to-date calculations to be based on the calendar year, as in January through December, go ahead and leave this unchecked. For the second financial setting, check this box if you want the system to automatically allocate sales volume based on the agent's share of commission when there are multiple agents on the transaction. For example, if two agents are splitting the commission 50% on a home that sold for $500,000, the system will divide the sales volume 50% and allocate $250,000 to each agent. This will default the sales volume amount to accurately reflect the total sales volume of $500,000 for the transaction. If left unchecked, the system will automatically enter the full sales price for each agent as a default. That means if the sales price is $500,000, each agent will receive $500,000 of sales volume. Since $500,000 is allocated to each agent, that means the company sales volume will reflect $1 million. Most offices prefer to check this box so that the company sales volume reflects the sales price. You will be able to edit the default amounts while managing commissions on a transaction. Once you've finalized your settings, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page to save your settings. Next, we're gonna head on over to the Manage Users page. So let's click that on the left menu here. As part of the setup, you can enter your agent's current commission split. That will allow the system to auto-populate that information when you're managing commission on a transaction. Click on an agent's name to assign or edit an agent's commission split. That brings us to the Edit User page. Go ahead and scroll down to the Commission Percent section. If you haven't managed commission for that agent, you'll need to click the plus sign to expand that section. First, enter the agent's share of commission in the commission percentage field. If your agents are on a commission plan that allows them to increase to a higher commission split once they've reached their cap, you can track that in the next commission split threshold field. This field tracks how much of an agent's commission has been paid to the brokerage. For example, if your agent is on a 75% commission split until they've paid the broker $20,000 of commission, you would enter $20,000 in this field. In this example, once the broker has earned $20,000, the system will warn you that the agent has or is about to reach their cap. Next, enter any commission notes such as the agent's commission plan or fee reminders. This information will be displayed next to the agent's name when managing commission on a transaction. Next, if your agent will be paid directly at closing and the payable name needs to be different than their first and last name, such as their company name, enter that payable name in the payable LLC or corp field. If the agent's payable should be made to their first and last name, go ahead and leave this field blank. Last, enter the agent's start date. This is especially important if you are tracking their year-to-date figures based on their anniversary date. And that's it. Go ahead and scroll down and select Update User. As you can see, the Commission Split column displays the agent's current commission split. You'll want to complete the commission split setup for each agent. While we're on the Manage Users page, you can also give certain admin users permission to access reports, as well as the ability to manage commissions and generate commission disbursement authorizations for your company. I'm going to select one of my admin users. 
This is Clyde, an admin for my Allen location. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the financial permissions for that location. The first checkbox will give Clyde permission to enter financial information and generate a CDA for transaction in his location. The second permission will give him access to view financial reports. You'll note that the permissions are location based. If you'd like for a user to have permissions in multiple locations, you can expand each location to do that. Keep in mind that both financial permissions are admin level permissions and should not be given to agents as it will give them access to other agents' financial information. Once you've completed the updates, go ahead and select Update User. Now let's move on to setting up fees and deductions. On the left menu, click on Agent Fees. Agent fees are fees paid to the brokerage from the agent's share of commission. To set up an agent fee, insert the fee name. If that fee has a default amount that will be charged on every transaction, you can enter that amount as a dollar amount or as a percentage. For fees that are based on a percentage, you can select the fee percent basis dropdown and select the basis. As you can see, fees can be automatically calculated based on a percentage of gross commission, sale price, distributable commission, broker gross, agent gross, or gross commission less referral. For fees with a default fee amount, the system will automatically apply that fee amount to each agent on a transaction when managing commissions. You will have the option to change that amount for any individual transaction as needed. If you don't want the system to automatically apply this fee on every transaction, or if the fee amount varies, you can leave the fee amount blank. You will be able to manually add the agent fee amount to any individual transaction from the Manage Commission page as needed. Once you have added all of your fees, click Save Settings to save. Next, let's move on to setting up client fees. Click on Client Fees from the left menu. Client fees are fees paid by buyers or sellers outside of normal commissions. Client fees can be paid directly to the brokerage or agent on the transaction. Some examples of client fees include agent bonuses, state fees or taxes, or transaction fees charged to clients. To set up a client fee, insert the fee name. If that fee has a default amount, enter that in the default fee amount field. Like agent fees, client fees can be entered as default dollar amounts or as a percentage. For fees that are based on a percentage, select the fee percent basis dropdown and select the basis. Any client fees added here can be optionally added to the transaction as needed. Also, any default amounts entered can be changed for any individual transaction when managing commissions. Once you have added all of your fees, click Save Settings to save. As the final step in our setup process, we will be setting up deductions. Click on the Deductions link on the left menu. Deductions are fees that can be taken off the top before the broker-agent split or paid directly from the broker or agent share of commission. Off-the-top deductions can be used to pay money to the broker, in-house agents, or third parties, whereas regular deductions paid from the broker or agent share of commission can be paid to in-house agents or third parties. Some examples of deductions include charitable contributions, client rebates, MLS fees, home warranty fees, or payments to an in-house user, such as an assistant or transaction coordinator. To set up a deduction, insert the fee name. If that fee has a default amount, enter that in the default fee amount field. 
Like other fees, deductions can be entered as a default dollar amount or as a percentage. For fees that are based on a percentage, select the Fee Percent Basis dropdown and select the basis. Any deductions added here can optionally be added to the transaction as needed. Also, any default amounts entered can be changed for any individual transaction when managing commissions. Once you have added all your fees, click Save Settings to save. And that's it. We have completed the basic setup steps to get started with managing commissions.